So now we've created the interface, now we can go ahead and create your own unique track plan. So we go edit, we go to the switchboard, you need to give your layout whatever name you so desire, so we'll just call it Give it a name, whatever you want to call it. Now this opens up the switchboard. This grid is where we draw the plan. But we can make this bigger by stretching it out and dropping it down to suit whatever size you want to create your plan. Every individual square is an individual element and on the right hand side we can see all those different elements. So we've got straights, curves, we start at the top. So we've got this middle one is for cars, just ignore that. We've got straights, curves, direction arrows, linking images, buffers, turnouts, different types, crossovers, automatic start of routes, blocks, feedbacks, route setting, uncouplers, turntables, transfer tables, and um, <laughs> I've forgotten the word. Um, I've got to tell us right. Train magazine. So what this basically is, is like a elevator. Um, so in the UK, we haven't really got one of these. An elevator used to be made, but I think they've stopped doing that now. Um, and then below that, this little icon here, is to create your stations. Uh, we'll go into more depth in that in a later video. So these will be items, we'll then talk about that. Okay, so if we want to put in multiple pieces of straight track at a time, you select the object on the right hand side first, which I've got the straight selected. We then can highlight all the boxes where we want straights, hit the space bar, Oops, no, I didn't, I must have clicked on it, sorry. Hit the space bar and it puts just straights in. So you can quickly fill up your area with all the straights in one direction, if you so wish, by highlighting and inserting. Then if you want to put in some turnouts on the right hand side, we can select it, we want to rotate it first to whichever rotation you want. You can use either the cursor keys, the arrow keys, or T and R, and rotate it clockwise and anti-clockwise. We can then put in the turnout, press the space bar, and it puts it in in the orientation we wish. I'll put one in the other end. There we go, so that's, we just need to link it up with some tracks, so some curves, again, you can rotate the piece before you put it in. If you don't rotate the piece when you put it in, you can again use the arrows or T and R to rotate it after you've placed it. And then we'll put in bits of straight. And then we'll come into the curves in a second. Okay, so now I'm just gonna make this into a full circle. Um, as you can see, I'm rotating the pieces as I put them in. It's not such a problem here. Uh, go back to the straight line. When you highlight down through to fill all these straights in one go, if however many of these blocks you highlight, if you were to do that, it would fill them all the straights going down. So if you're building a fiddle yard or something like that, you could quickly fill it up um, and that would work. So this is going to be our basic plan we're going to work from. At the moment, it's just literally the bare bones of the track. This is only a mimic of what you've got. It's not to scale, it's just 
to give you an illustration so you know what your layout is. Now, if you wanted to make a change to this to make it wider or move something, you can highlight all those items, press Shift Control, and you can shift it out the way so you can move bits as a whole. So we'll do it the other side as well. Shift Control and use the direction arrows and you can shift it out of the way. You can then fill in the spaces we've we had. So you can always edit it after you started to draw it. So say you ran out of space to put something in, you could literally you could take this whole layout and move it into a different cell so you had more space somewhere else. So we could literally highlight the whole layout, shift control. You can do this in Mac as well. And move it wherever you want. So that's quite useful. So once we've com completed the diagram of the layout, we need to add the blocks in. The elements for the blocks are this white image zoom in a bit there we go so this white image here this means block image this one's the feedbacks and this is direction arrows these are the next elements we have to put in before we create the blocks so on this layout I'm gonna have two blocks up here in our station area so we need a minimum of these items in each block I always put two feedbacks in every block, but we'll talk about that a bit more in the next one. But I mean, let's just put them in just so you can see. Oops, wrong image. And it was on the wrong one. So if you if you're facing the same direction with the image of something that's already there, it replaces it. If you're not, I'll show you that in a minute. Hang on. Okay, and then we need a direction arrow in each block as well. So you must draw all these things in to the track plan to create the, before you create the blocks. If you had had a piece of track section and it was going opposite direction, so say it was coming over these rails here, yeah, and you put them in. You see it's grey around the edge, if we zoom in, you can see it's grey. That means, say you had a, a, a tunnel and a track going over the top, that's what that is. If you rotate that round, it stays grey, that does not mean it's part of the lower layer. It's a, it's a, a layer above the original one. So you must make sure it's facing the same way as the track if you wish it to be part of that lower layer. Uh, this is the end of what this looks like for creating a track plan. We'll show you the next one, how to create your blocks.